I'm Dr. Laura Jurgens, and I am a faculty member in the Marine Biology Department at Texas A&M Galveston. My lab studies processes that support the resilience and sustainability of marine invertebrate communities in coastal and estuarine ecosystems. So we work in things like oyster reef communities where there's lots more species than just oysters or mussel beds or seagrass beds where there's also a lot of invertebrates. And we look at invertebrate biodiversity and the processes that enable it to um, persist despite climate variability, extreme events, and all kinds of human-based stressors. So I have a number of graduate students working with me on those types of projects. I also have some fun projects both here in Texas, collaborating with some of our local nonprofit organizations on oyster restoration monitoring, as well as understanding stresses and climate change possibilities and projections for oysters and invertebrate populations, invasive species in Galveston Bay, um, and some of those types of projects. We also work in the uh, Pacific system, so on the west coast of the US, between Alaska and Baja, Mexico, we're looking at muscle bed dynamics. We have some collaborations with some great colleagues in Mexico and some new projects in the Philippines. So I teach invertebrate zoology at Texas A&M Galveston for undergraduates, and I also teach a graduate level class in marine ecosystems. And some other fun um, facts about me, my, um, I did my PhD at the University of California, Davis. I was in residence at the Bodega Marine Laboratory, which is in Bodega Bay, a very tiny little fishing town on the coast of Sonoma County. And I lived in California for quite a while. I did my undergraduate at University of California at Santa Cruz. And I worked for a monitoring and uh, tide pool based science project as an intern there before I started my PhD program. I was originally a transfer student to UC Santa Cruz, so I did most of my preparation at community colleges, which was excellent and I would advise it for anybody. Um, and I think transfer students have a lot to offer a university and should try as soon as possible to get into research and research labs if you're interested in science. Um, so that's a piece of advice I have for new transfer students, as well as freshmen, which you have a freshmen have a little bit more time to um, investigate around the university and see what um, interests you. But I think transfer students need to sort of jump right in because hopefully you're going to finish up in just a sh couple short years. So those are my pieces of advice and hopefully you enjoy this introduction to my lab. I'm Emily and I am a second year master's student in Dr. Jurgen's lab here at A&M Galveston. Uh, I'm interested in looking at invertebrate communities and how these communities can change in structure um, depending on where they're located and over time. Um, currently, I'm working on a project in collaboration with Galveston Bay Foundation, uh, looking at the development of invertebrate communities within their constructed oyster reefs. Um, so they've developed this great program of returning recycled oyster shells. So that's from um, restaurants that use oysters here in Galveston and up in Harris County um, and returning these recycled shells back to Galveston Bay. So by doing this, they are able to create structure for new oysters to settle and grow um, and ultimately create a living oyster reef. So in order to keep the shell material together um, and keep it from dispersing from water movement before new oysters can grow and cement the material together. Um, they uh, use a bag method in which they take uh, aquaculture mesh and they bag up the recycled shell and stack it um, and create a pyramid structure. And then the new oysters can grow and um, cement that together over the mesh. Um, so I am sampling from one of these constructed reefs over the course of a year in order to get a sense of the changes in you know, oyster and mussel growth and abundance, um, what the community of sessile invertebrates, so those are invertebrates that settle and then can't move, things like barnacles and anemones and um, 
various sessile worms, um, and then how those community structures change over time, and then also the number and abundance of mobile invertebrates such as crabs and shrimp um, that are utilizing this habitat, what that looks like over time as well. So I'll uh, do a quick tour of my field site and then what I'm looking at in the lab for you. Um, here we go. My name is Annika. I'm a second year master's student in Dr. Laura Jurgens' lab. I'm currently studying the effects of multiple climatic stressors on oyster populations in Galveston Bay. I'm looking at how a prior temperature stress, like if oysters are super stressed out during the summer months, how that will affect them if then oysters are later exposed to a lower salinity stress, like if a hurricane comes through and dumps a lot of fresh water. So now oysters are exposed to one stress, that really hot summer, and a second stress, uh, that really low salinity because of like a hurricane or a lot of rainfall. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you my setup here, which I set up in the Sea Lake facility. So this is the setup for my oyster project. On the shelves here, you can see um, I had four different treatments that were at ambient temperature, that were just at room temperature, and half of these tanks were actually at lower salinities. But you can see the oysters at the bottom of these tanks. Similarly, you can see that I had four different treatments in these water baths, and I set up these water baths so I could keep the tanks at higher temperatures, and the water in these baths were constantly circulating from this larger tank that you will see in a second um, to maintain that higher temperature. I am the lab manager in the Jurgens lab here in the marine biology department at Texas A&M Galveston. I have a degree in marine science and marine biology and a master's degree in environmental science. One of the projects that I work on here in the Jurgens lab is the Galveston Bay Biodiversity Monitoring Project. For this project, we put out small settlement panels around the bay and we will let them grow a small community of invertebrates over um, a season, so about three months, and then we bring them back to the lab and look at what organisms have settled onto that panel and are creating that community across different salinity environments and also time scales um, in the bay. So one of our sites is here actually on campus in the boat basin and we're going to pull up one of our panels and take a look at that experimental design. So here's one of our panels that has been out for about two months now. Um, so we actually already have a lot of growth happening on here. A few things you can see, these are barnacles um, over here. And all of these white tubes are serpulid worms. Um, and kind of this pink and slightly orange or brown are a type of bryozoan, an encrusting bryozoan. And so how do these differ at your different sites? Um, so some of our lower salinity sites um, have had fewer species present. Um, in our higher salinity sites, we typically have more species present on the panels. So some of these serpulid worms, we actually have um, about five species that we've found so far in the, across the entire bay. Um, and certain taxa, such as uh, anemones, we only find at our higher salinity sites. So up north, closer to Houston, we haven't found any anemones on our panels there. Um, some other organisms that we find that aren't on this panel right now, or that we can't see without the microscope, um, are things like small mussels and oysters, um, hydroids, which are related to anemones, um, and other types of worms like spionids, and sabellid worms, and we also will find uh, camptozoans, which are a really small colonial organism as well. Excellent. Have you been able to identify any invasive species on your panels? Um, we have a few species that we believe are not native. Um, some of our sa samples are still awaiting taxonomic verification, um, but this bryozoan here with the pink 
um, we believe is a non-native species and actually one of the anemones may be non-native as well. So that's all really interesting information. Uh, why is it important to study these invertebrates in an estuary system such as Galveston Bay? Great question. So these small invertebrate communities are important habitat, but also a food source for a lot of um, small fish and crabs. So for example, we see mullet and blue crabs both feeding off of not only the panels, but the community that's also growing here on the side of these docks. Um, so those are, they're an important contribution to the ecosystem as a whole. And our monitoring them over time not only establishes what the biodiversity is in the bay, but we can then look for changes in response to either extreme events like hurricanes or the introduction of a non-native species and how that community responds um, to those stressors. 